It's an exciting day today. I have two incubators, each housing a singleton kitten. And today, these little babies get to become friends. Quarantining is kind of like primping for a date. You wanna make sure you're nice and healthy and looking good before you get to go meet someone. So these boys have been two weeks of primping. And now look at you, you're healthy, you're chunky. You got a big chunky pink belly and now you're ready to go into the playpen. I'm gonna go get your friend, Bambino. He's over there waiting for you. Bambino! Are you ready? Here we go. We're gonna go see our friend for the very first time. Here we are. <gasps> Who's that? Who's that? Piccolino, you didn't even notice. Wow. Hey everyone. Gosh, today is an exciting day because my two little foster kittens have finally met and become friends. Bambino and Piccolino were both solo orphans and I've been waiting for two whole weeks to be able to introduce them. Now that they are off quarantine, they are becoming fast friends. Quarantine, you ask? Why were they quarantined? Well, because every single kitten who I rescue is quarantined for two weeks. Most of the kittens that I rescue come from the street where they can be exposed to contagious diseases. So it's really important that all of them undergo a two week quarantine before they can be introduced to other animals. In this video, I'm going to answer all of your questions about quarantining kittens, and I'm going to tell you how and why quarantine is so important. Let's start with some of your questions. What if a kitten appears totally healthy when you take them in? A kitten might seem healthy when they come to you, but don't be fooled, they can still have contagious diseases that will arise. Some viruses can take many days to incubate, and so they don't have symptoms when you first take them in, but several days later, suddenly they become symptomatic. Parasites can take time to populate, and so it might not seem like an issue when you first get them, and then all of a sudden, a couple days later, they have horrific diarrhea. And even with things like ringworm, when they're exposed, they don't have symptoms right away. It takes time for them to develop those lesions and that hair loss. So two weeks is a good amount of time to give our kittens time to show any symptoms of what they've been exposed to. What are you looking for during this two week period? During the two week period, I'm looking for signs of contagious illness. I'm looking for things like diarrhea, which could indicate parasites or a bacterial infection or even a virus. I'm looking for things like vomiting and fever and lethargy that could point to a virus. I'm looking at the hair and skin to see if there's any signs of external parasites or fungal infections. I'm basically getting to know the kitten's health and making sure that not only they receive treatment, but also that I have a definitive diagnosis so I know if this kitten has something that could be easily spread to others. Why two weeks? Well, some people do 10 days, some people do 14. The protocol really varies depending on the person or the organization. I find that two weeks is usually enough time for the most concerning diseases to present themselves if they are there. For instance, panleukopenia is a potentially fatal virus and it can take many days to reveal itself. So I want to let a two week period clear so I can feel confident introducing kittens to each other. Do kittens from the same litter need to be quarantined from one another? No, they do not. Kittens from the same litter or kittens who are found together who are already exposed to one another can be assumed to be exposed to the same risk of disease. So when you take in a family, they can quarantine as a group. You just don't wanna go introducing any other kittens to that group until after a two week period. If you're only fostering one kitten, do you still need to quarantine them? Yes, you absolutely should quarantine every single kitten you take in, even if you're not planning on introducing them to others. The reason for this is one, they can have diseases that can spread to your resident animals. 
but two, they can also have contagious illnesses that can live in the carpet or in your furniture, and that can have an effect on future foster animals. So quarantine is important for containing any contagious disease and making sure it does not spread to other animals or other items in your home. That's going to ensure that everybody is safe now and in the future. Does this really matter? Yes, it really matters. Please know that the more you foster, the more likely it is that at some point you're going to experience taking in a kitten with a contagious disease. Nothing is more painful than taking in two solo kittens like Bambino and Piccolino and introducing them not knowing that one is able to infect the other with something serious or fatal. Please take my word for it, quarantine your kittens. Even if you only have one, quarantine them to protect your future kittens. You don't wanna learn through experience. Learn through this video instead. Okay, so let's break it down. Here's what you need to know about quarantining kittens. Number one, keep kittens contained and separate from other animals. While a kitten is under quarantine, you need to have them in a contained area separate from other animals. For neonates, this can be a plastic bin, a box, a large carrier, a kennel, or even an incubator. For larger kittens, this can be a playpen, a kennel, an area sectioned off with plastic panels, a bathroom, or any other space that you can contain the kittens without giving them access to other animals or to difficult to clean porous items like carpet and furniture. In all the suggestions that I just made, it's very easy to disinfect your space. So even if contagious disease arises, it's totally okay. Afterwards, you just have to disinfect. In terms of how separate they need to be, just do your best to reasonably keep them apart. They don't necessarily need to be in different rooms across the house from one another. You just wanna keep them separate enough that nobody is booping noses, nobody is within sneezing range of one another, nobody can be licking each other's butts. We wanna keep them reasonably far apart. For instance, you wouldn't put two cages side by side with an opening where they can access each other. I just recommend having them as separate as is reasonable for your setup. Number two, you want to have separate supplies. If you're caring for kittens from different litters, you don't just wanna have them in separate spaces, you also wanna be using separate supplies. Each kitten should have their own bottle, their own blankets, their own bin for weighing, etc. I mean, think about it. If we use a bottle with one kitten and they're getting their saliva on it, and then you go and use that bottle with a kitten who is quarantined, you actually are just introducing the saliva of the one kitten to the other one. So you wanna be mindful of those things and just keep separate supplies for kittens from different groups. One thing I do that helps me a lot is I will color code the items. For instance, Bambino has a yellow clip on his incubator and that reminds me that Bambino's bottle is yellow. I put a little yellow rubber band around it. Picolino has a green clip on his incubator to help me remember that the bottle with the green rubber band is Picolino's. Number three, be mindful of cross-contamination. It isn't just that you wanna keep the kittens and their items separate, you also wanna be mindful of not cross-contaminating by touching something and then touching something else. Anytime you handle a kitten under quarantine, you'll want to either wear gloves or wash your hands thoroughly with soap and hot water after working with them and their supplies. This also applies to any time you're touching the kitten's items. For instance, if you pick up a bottle you're using with a kitten, you'd wanna wash your hands before touching the other bottle. To cut down on cross-contaminating things like handles and knobs, I'll use one hand to open the cabinets, turn on sinks, open the fridge, etc., and I'll use the other to collect the kitten supplies. Just be aware of what you're touching and where you might be spreading those contaminants. And remember, if you're stepping inside of a space with your kittens, such as a bathroom or a large sectioned off area, you need to practice foot hygiene as well. You can order disposable booties or have special socks or sandals you wear only within that space. Remember that viruses and fungal spores can live on the ground. So as you're stepping through that space, you don't wanna then drag that into the rest of your home. And to that end, if you're working with quarantined kittens who you are sitting on the ground with and placing in your lap, might be a good idea to have separate sweatpants that you wear only in that room, you know, a nice oversized t-shirt or smock that you wear with them. And of course, make sure that you are tying your hair up so that they're only touching things that then you can 
take off and you can make sure are not touching other animals or items in your house. And don't forget, your phone can easily spread contaminants between kittens. So make sure that if you are in there snapping photos of kittens who are under quarantine, you're either doing so with a clean hand or you are sanitizing your phone afterwards. Which brings me to number four, sanitize everything. Disinfectant is your friend. Anytime you have a concern about cross-contamination, be sure you're using an appropriate disinfectant spray that can kill the viruses, fungal spores, and bacteria that you want it to kill. I use Rescue Disinfectant, which is an accelerated hydrogen disinfectant, and it's perfect for using with animal care. Follow the instructions on the bottle carefully when you're mixing your disinfectant and when you're using it. For instance, many of them require a minimum contact time where they are just wet on top of the item. So make sure that you are reading the instructions carefully. I do have a chart in my book, Tiny But Mighty, with the pros, cons, and uses of different disinfectants. So I will pop that here. And number five, monitor and treat. During the two-week quarantine, you're of course going to be meeting all of your kitten's health needs, including prophylactic treatment. So things like their dewormer, any vaccines that are age appropriate for them, but it also means that you're monitoring them and you are addressing quickly any symptoms that arise. So how do you know when it's safe for two kittens to meet? Well, for me, if they've gone two weeks with no symptoms of contagious disease, then at that point, I personally feel comfortable introducing my babies to one another. If during the two weeks they've had a medical issue, but it's not a contagious illness, for instance, let's say that they had a broken limb or a congenital issue, then yes, I would introduce the kittens. But if during those two weeks they've had a contagious medical issue arise, or if they've had symptoms arise and I haven't determined if it is a contagious illness or not, then introducing them to other kittens is off the table until we have a diagnosis and until we know that they are clear from whatever that contagious illness is. Some issues can be resolved really quickly. For instance, fleas can typically be resolved within a few days, whereas issues like ringworm can take many weeks to treat. And so I'm not introducing that kitten to others or into a bigger space until I know that they are clear of that issue. But of course, with any medical concern, the best thing to do is take the kitten to a veterinarian and ask for their advice. You can ask them, when is it safe for them to be around other animals? And when is it safe for them to freely roam in the rest of my house? But once whatever contagious illness they had has passed and you have the go ahead from your veterinarian, then you get to introduce your babies. And fortunately for Picolino and Bambino, these two have been very healthy the entire time. So after two weeks, I finally got to introduce them and now they are going to be best friends. Listen, I know quarantining is not everybody's favorite thing. It's very tempting to just get in there and bury your face in neonate bellies, but believe me, you're going to be very happy you did it because this is really what is best and safest for everyone. Oh, I am so happy that you boys are friends now. Seriously, they are inseparable. So cute. Aww.